Hey, this is Tony, and welcome to Coolest Life. This is the how-to edition. I'm gonna take you through exactly how I went about replacing this and how I knew there was a problem. So uh, come along with me and join me as I uh, embark on this adventure. <laughs> You've just entered the Coolest Life. <laughs> All right, so how did I even get here? Well, uh, in an RV, uh, you've got a water pump. Now, if you're using what we call city water, it uses the, the water pressure from the city water system. So you don't use this. You still have one, because just in case you're at an RV park or something like that, or, or, or uh, someplace that maybe doesn't have water hookups or boondocking or in a, in a parking lot of a Walmart or something, you could still get water from your fresh water tanks if you have one of these water pumps. The water pumps, they're going to generally, generally run you anywhere between $75 and $175, depending on where you get them, whether you get them online or, or whether you get them from, you know, uh, so, some other retailer. Um, they basically look like this. Uh, what you see over here um, is the filter. That's this piece right here. It's the filter. And this actually comes off right here where I'm wiggling my finger. It's actually its own little piece. Um, and it looks like this. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that when you replace it, uh, that you get the exact same kind of model and figure out what it is. This one here, you can see it's got a 2000, what's it say? 2088. You see a 2088? 2088 is going to tell me I want to get a 2088 or I want to get one that says, and Sure, which is the name of this company, um, SureFlow, uh, they make a replacement. And mine was a four... 4008 so that's what i replaced it with basically you want to do that because you don't want to get something that if your system is only 40 psi you don't want to replace try to replace it with a 90 psi oh sure you might get water pressure out of the system but it puts that extra strain on all the pipes in your system so if the from the manufacturer if the pipes in your system aren't rated for 90 psi yikes you may have a problem so you want to get the right psi for your for your uh for your rv now, how do you replace this? It's plug and plug. No, let me backtrack. How did I know there was a problem? Well, it was shuttering. It wasn't making a good connection. So what I did <clears throat> was I looked into these little connectors here. You probably see them right inside of there. See the connectors? <clears throat> I pulled them out and they look like this. And the one on top was burnt. So I knew there was an issue there. Uh, I pulled it out and <clears throat> replace a regular hot wire to it, a regular uh, 12 volt to see if it would even come on and it wouldn't. So that told me something was going on. Something was going on right up here. I took this piece apart and realized all it is is a suction valve, but there is a relay inside of here that I need to, needed to replace. The problem is you can't get those relays. At least I sure couldn't find them. I actually even looked for this piece alone up here, but because it's an older model, it's even harder to find. So my pump itself... My motor part works fine. It's just this relay wasn't working. However, for $75, I replaced the whole thing and get a brand new setup. So that's what I did. Um, so uh, you can take this apart here, but you don't need to. All you need to do is replace it is when you order these, you typically get this piece here also uh, comes with it. Not always, but if you're going to replace this one here, go ahead and replace this one here. There's a connector at this end. There's a connector at this end. And there's plug connectors that look like this. There's basically three of them. This is one. This is this one here is going to go to the bottom part. Let me see if I can find it. This one here goes down. Actually plugs into this bottom piece is where it comes from. This one here is uh, is connected to your red wire it's coming from your, your RV. And this one here is a black wire that's going to connect uh, to, your, uh, uh, to your black wire in your RV. So you get that consistent electrical flow is, is what you're looking for. Um, connected to the wall, you're going to have this. Essentially, you've got one, two, and then down at the bottom, three, four screws that mount this. And this is normally rubberized or some kind of some kind of plastic. This one here is a little rubberized, and they do that because of the vibration this thing causes. A lot of times, if you have a lot of noise with your um, water pump, it's not necessarily the water pump itself. It's because the pipes 
are vibrating and those pipes that are close to this water pump are actually bumping up against something and they're and they're doing one of these a lot of times that's what you're hearing this does make some noise don't get me wrong it does make some noise but if you can eliminate some of that piping noise also then uh, uh, all the better and also you want to make sure nothing is touching nothing is touching this because it's going to vibrate a little bit because it's going to just a little bit as it runs um you're going to see this thing running when you're running your dishwasher uh, if you have a dishwasher i don't if, if your your clothes washer i got one of those uh and it and also your your showers it's going to it's going to run a little more again if you're not plugged into city water if you're in the city water this doesn't run at all so this is only basically your backup if you're out there boondocking now what's it going to look like when we uh, when we get in here let me turn this thing around you can see it all right so this is my uh this is my octopus I've got in here. You can see I got me a pool noodle. And if you cut slots in your pool noodles, they'll actually bend pretty well. And basically, I don't want these pipes rubbing against each other is what it is. It re reduces the noise is what it does. That one there is just a the support. There's actually not even a tube in there. I've got one down here, which I really don't even need because this is an overflow. Now, when you get started, you definitely want to disconnect your power. You want to shut off your water obviously because if not as soon as you start taking these off it's going to spew everywhere the other thing you got to do screws screws connect disconnect this one hand disconnect it hand tighten it hand disconnect it hand tighten it same thing it's plug and play it really is uh, you can see my connectors back there on the back side and that's the sure flow that i have there there was really nothing to it once i got the part in um it was, um, I don't know, a 30 minute job. It's not that difficult. Anybody can do it. And I do mean anybody, as long as you can get access to this, I'm pretty lucky because mine's right here by my steps. I got a place to set my tools. I got a, actually these tools I pulled out of my bay. This is where I keep my tools right here close to my door, but, uh, but they're easy to do. You can just, you can just, um, set that there get you a stool someplace to sit on i'll recommend that let me recommend this really quick get you someplace to sit if you're at a place like this and you're working there for any length of time i got one of these a cyclone seat basically it just it's a it's got an adjustable height because you get this thing too hard and you're bumping your head on this and you get it too low and you can't get your arms over top of this so you want to get it in there just right make yourself as comfortable as possible so you can get both hands on this it's not all that heavy um maybe 10 pounds eight pounds something like that it's not much uh loosen them up get it plugged in make sure it works by starting the water turning the water back on and that's all there is to it well i hope you enjoyed this video of uh of the water pumps they're extremely easy to do i know that i didn't physically show you how i unscrewed everything but but i think you kind of get the idea if you just look at it it's not that difficult to do there's a hose one in one out and then you've got four screws that's all there is to it it's not that difficult you don't need a tech for that if you're somewhat you know uh able-bodied you, you can definitely do something like this yourself hope you enjoyed this video be sure to send this to your friends um and maybe they can, uh, I'll try to send out some more, uh, do some more how-to videos if I can. <clears throat> but I'm going to let you go because uh, I got to get back out here trying to live the coolest life. How-to edition.